All right, let's roll. Yeah, obviously, just kind of, this is maybe a weird question, but with Michael Thomas not being available and you knowing that now, does that ease things in some ways? Does that kind of change anything in terms of? There's nothing easy in this league, Michael. There's nothing easy. This is a really good football team. They've won three in a row. Uh, they've been the standard in this division for the last four years. Uh, they got, to me, one of the more successful uh, coaches in, in football in the last 20 years is Sean Payton. And they've done it a bunch of different ways. And that's, to me, the sign of a great football coach. They've evolved. In the last couple of years, they made a commitment to the run game, and they won, they've won the division. They've won it throwing the football. They've run it running the football. They've run it with defense. They've run it with offense. They've run it with special teams. They continue to win. And we got a heck of a challenge going down there. So they're going to line up. they got good players, good scheme, good coaches. And we're going to have to stop Kamara. We're going to have to, you know, essentially stop Ingram in the run game. they got a lot of guys that can make plays on the, on the perimeter, and they're creative. So it's going to be a challenge whether Michael Thomas was playing or not. they got good players. You had worked with Trevor. You mentioned it on Monday. You worked mm -hmm. with Trevor? Him last year. What was it that stood out about him when you were working with him last year? Very smart. And it's not got anything to do with where he went to college either. So uh, Trevor's very sharp. He understands how to play quarterback. He's going to make the right read. And I can see why they like him. Same reason I like Trevor. Corey? I know we were talking the other day about how essentially losing the line of scrimmage. And that was kind of the, the whole key to Sunday's game. I mean, how do you kind of move things forward? What are you kind of telling these guys up front about, hey, this is this is a crux of what we need to be doing moving forward? Well, it's just the honest thing what happened in one game. It hasn't been – it's still not catastrophic. We've got ten other opportunities and no, nothing more important. There's one opportunity ahead of us on Sunday. So, we've, been, we've played pretty well in the line of scrimmage. Clearly, we didn't on Sunday, and you credit to them. So, we're at three and four. We deserve to be three and four. We got a lot of opportunities left ahead of us. And uh, so I told you early in the season, the picture the picture is going to change too. It's an hour into November. You're right in the middle of the pack. And the good teams are going to continue to improve and find ways to win. So you're playing more meaningful games in December. And that, that's, ne that's never changed in the National Football League. It's true in the 70s. It's true today. So that's what we got to do. Well, it just makes you, you know, you have to account for everybody. So, and the other thing, it's really just practical. We've got, we've got a lot of guys that can move the football. So, if you can find ways, sometimes the cover's going to dictate it. Uh, you know, it's, and you can try to force things in sometimes. Um, come hell or high water, there's certain things you can do if you just want to force targets to people. Certainly, but the defense also has to say they can, they can take somebody away. If they want to double them or the way they want to roll the coverage. And you got to have other answers. So, um, we got a lot of guys that can move the football, and we're way more efficient as an offense when they're, when we can do that and more people are involved. Charles, you mentioned that Trevor, have you um, had to uh, look at film of a, what they look like with Taysom Hill, the quarterback, including against the Falcons uh, last, last year? Sure. Um, you know, Taysom Hill is a really effective player. They can use him in multiple ways. You know, he, he hasn't played in a month, so he should be pretty fresh coming back. If they want to put him in the quarterback run packages, he's a physical runner. I know he's been out, but uh, he's a physical football player, and they can certainly use him in the quarterback run. They can use him in the drop back game. He's a terrific all around football player. And another guy you got to account for if he's in there. And if Trevor's in there, he's going to run that offense really well. And, you know, we'll see what their game play, plan is. But I know this I know Trevor will be smart. He'll make the right decision for him. Charles, what type of problems do the Saints defense present for you? Well, every week there's challenges. That's the National Football League. Um, so they're extremely, extremely fast physical defense. These guys bring it. Their D-line is, is, to me, their rush lanes, the way they, 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 can, they can move and get vertical, as good as anybody. Uh, you know, I think they got a terrific D-line coach, and Ryan Nielsen. Those guys freaking play hard. They're all long. They're physical. They roll them all in there. Uh, schematically, you know, uh, you go back, and Dennis Allen's done a good job with him. You know, it's a pressure. He brings really good 
has good pressure packages. He added Chris Richard to the back end. I think you could see his influence on the back end. Um, they're well coached, and they got a lot of guys. Tomorrow, Davis to me is is a premier inside linebacker, and he's as good as they get. The way he diagnoses, how physical he plays, uh, so he can be a problem. So it's a, we got a good challenge ahead of us. Josh, with, with guys like Sean Payton and who have done it for a while, are there any commonalities in the way that, that you've noticed in the way that they approach things that have allowed them to stick in this job for a Well, there's a lot of ways people have been successful. A lot of industries. I mean, to me, that's what makes life unique and interesting. And when you're studying different industries and you look at whether it's you're looking at Sean Payton, you're looking at Mike Tomlin, looking at Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, just to name a few, and not to slight anybody else, but those are guys, obviously, in, in this job and this profession in the last 10 years have done it at a high level longer than anybody. Um, and, you know, I don't know all those guys really well personally, just watching them from afar. They've all been successful and they're doing it their own way. You know, when you just get down to New Orleans, like I said, I mean, it's been a very creative offense. They've won a lot of different ways. They've adapted to their personnel. They had a shift, uh, you know, in the mid part of this decade. And the roster changed significantly, and they found ways to win, and they won at a high level year over year. So that's a, to me, that's a testament of a really good coach and a really good organization. So is, is adaptability then? The sure. I mean, it can work for some people. You can certainly, certainly well noted. You look at New Orleans, and you look at uh, New England, and those, and that. I mean, all of those guys. Yeah, you got, you got to adapt. Like nobody wants to, you know. But I don't think some of the things are foundation. You look at Pittsburgh; they're going to be a really physical football team. They adapt. Obviously, their their offense. But, but at the end of the day, there's a, there is an identity. And in New Orleans, their identity. It's they're going to play hard, physical. They're going to throw a lot of personnel groups at you, and they're going to make life di life difficult. And they get in in there. That's a like I said, it's a hornet's nest. It's going to be loud, and that's what makes this game fun. You love to have the fans back because, it, to me, those are atmospheres you want to play in. What do you want people to say as Atlanta's identity in three years, four years? When they're looking at we'll see how the roster evolves. But at the end of the day, we're going to play well in the line of scrimmage. We're going to be able to adapt. We're going to play a smart situational football. And we're going to be able to finish games. That's what I want them to see. Michael. Uh, yeah, Goodell, it looked like, posted something on social media that with things at least working. Where is he at? A lot of the guys are that are on that they're on IR. They're working. They're returning to play. So again, I don't. That's 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 great that he's on social media. But you know, good for for Matt. I hope he's progressing, just like all of our players, Dante, all of them. And we'll make the assessment when the doctors. They, we we update it pretty much weekly. So that's all I can give you there. Do you, do you anticipate either one of those guys being back? Seven. We'll see. See what the doctors tell tell. You know, I get updated every day, and we have we have a plan. I'm not going to make those plans public. Uh, we have a great medical staff and a good team. So, you know, I'll just uh, – they tell me who's available, and that's who we, we play. When you've had a guy who's had two concussions in two months, what level of – A.J. Terrell, what – Did you diagnose him with that? You got to. No, that's not what happened. So, again, again, everybody's on the, on the protocols, but we're not going to put somebody out there if it hadn't been cleared. Like, so, like, it's just like when I got asked that he got – knocked out like those are just like I know where you're going with this we take everybody's player safety paramount in this league so you let the medical professionals handle it so if they're going to take it we're going to be very uh, very cautious but a guy doesn't go out there if, he, if he's had a, a second concussion right away unless it was identified so that's not what the case was with him that's why he played last week so then that's so what was your what's your question so my, my question is what the level of concern is that he's been, in, you know, if you're saying he didn't have a second concern, but if he's been in protocol twice in two months, what's your level of concern right the now? The reason they put him in the protocol, think about this logically. They put him in the protocol because we're trying to make the game safer. Nobody's in there, and I don't know anybody in the league in 2021 that's pushing guys out there that aren't ready to play. So we've gotten, to me, the game of football has gotten a lot smarter. Where you get these false narratives, so all of a sudden, you're just taking it on the surface. Like, so, again, so, where, so what are you trying to ask? Like, all these players, if somebody has an issue, whether it's the day after the game <clears throat> or happens in game or in practice, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we take care of the player. So that's, that's the best way I can give you. So I don't know where you're trying to lead, lead the rest of the questions. I wasn't trying to lead the rest of the questions. Okay. I was literally just asking. That, that, that's, that's what, that's what we do with every player. Every player, right. we're going to do that. I, so. What your level of concern is with him because My concern is with every player on the roster. 
it's really practical. And then try not to take everything on the surface. Every player we have in here, whether it's, it's an injury that's visible and invisible, I, like we care a lot. And so that's, that is a, that's a concern for every player on this roster, every coach on this roster, everybody in that building out, out here that works for the Atlanta Falcons. I understand this falls into the same category to some degree, but do you know if Calvin will be available Sunday? Don't know. So, it's like everybody with injury, we'll get updates, and we'll figure it out. And so, I, I'm not going to, I can't answer that because I don't know. You don't know. Right, that, that's all in. So, do you have for your preparation purposes a day of the week where you would need to know? You know, we need to know, by, let us know by Friday, let us know by Thursday. You, t- you, you have a, you prepared on the week. Okay, that's why we put a, you know an injury report out, and you, you have to assess what's realistic. If they're going to play, you got to plan. You got to be able to adapt. You got to be able to adapt whether something happens on a Friday. I've been a part of that. Or a guy, something happens at practice on Friday, you have to adapt. No different than a Saturday or a Sunday morning. It's no different than you get to the first play of the game. And something happens, the game's going to go on, and you got to have a plan. And so we always try to have a plan, and we we assess it as objective and as real as we can. So yeah, certainly it can alter it if you you know this guy's probably not going to make it to Sunday. Okay, we're well, probably not going to take an account. If you do take an account for somebody, and something happens on Friday or Saturday, you're not going to take your ball and go home. You're going to have to find a, another solution. Here's what we're going to have to do. No different if the, if the backup quarterback has to play. If you got to get down to your emergency quarterback, your your backup tackle, your backup swing guard, your backup Mike, and then on and on down the name. Backup punter. We've had to do that this year, right? Koo had to come in and punt. So you got to have a plan. That's private information, and I'm not going to not going to disclose that. Just like I'm not going to disclose, players can speak for themselves when it comes to their own injuries. So I'm not going to I'm not going to dive into that. I'll update you guys as soon as I know on the roster. I'm not trying to hide anything, but I'm not gonna, I'm not going to speak for a player. Yeah, I understand that, and you guys have to do your job, and I don't fault you for that. But I'm not going to disclose their personal information. Depends on the scheme you're playing. I mean, they gave him a lot of attention in Miami. He won his matchups. Didn't win on Sunday. So, I mean, that's part of that's life in the NFL. It's the best, the best, the lessons learned. We got a lot of faith in Kyle. He's a rookie. You know, I, I continue to joke that, you know, you play one good game, it's just the way of the world now. The hype's unbelievable. More than ever, it's in your face 24 7. And if you want to live through your avatar, you're going to live through a, a false reality. And the reality is, that any rookie in this league, it's going to be hard. And you're going to have to assess it when you see the whole picture at the end of the season and then a couple years into their career. But if you live and die with the week-to-week narratives, shame on you. And Kyle, he's done, done a lot of good things as a rookie, like all of us, including myself. We've got room to improve. Um, he's going to draw a lot of attention. He's usually the biggest guy on the field. Where's number eight? Every defense we've played has had a plan for him. They, they, and it's up to the coordinator how they want to play it. And at the end of the day, you're going to get man coverage as a, as a wide out or tight end or if you're a back that's in the passing game, and you're going to have to beat man coverage. And they're really good players in this league, and nobody's superhuman. Yeah, yeah, this, is, this is kind of very maybe a minutia question, but can you explain the strategy between with Elliot Fry basically bringing him in on Fridays? And then I think <laughs> one's pretty obvious. I like the minutia word <laughs> uh, to go back and forth, to spar back and forth. And I tell about looking on the surface. It's right there in front of you, man. Like it's pretty, no, pretty, pretty damn obvious. I know, but I, I'm just, I'm just wondering, you know, like because basically the guy's getting hired on Fridays and fired on Mondays. It, you See know, again, there's, there's, there's the dramatic language. It's not fired, guys. It's, it's the roster move. Yeah. And if your mindset's that kind of soft and it's like, oh, I got fired. No, Elliot knows the plan. Most of these guys, it's a hard, hard life. You're well compensated. The NFL is hard, but like there's things you have to do. You're gonna see it every day. You gotta see the roster moves around the league. We're still dealing in a pandemic world, correct? You hope it's closer to the end than it's not. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an epidemiologist. I don't have all the answers. Maybe I can get online and claim I do, like a lot of people in this world, but I don't. So again, you've got to have a plan. So that, that's pretty obvious. Um, we got confidence if Elliot had to go on a Sunday, he would go. 
And uh, but the answer is just there's nothing trying to hide there. It's right in plain right, sight. No, I, I'm not thinking trying to hide. I'm just I'm just wondering what those conversations are like with a guy. Like on a Monday, you'd be like, all right, see you in three days. Like, <laughs> it's actually not a bad gig. He gets paid for the week, and he works like two days. But he stays ready, and he's a professional, and we got a lot of faith in him. And then if, again, again, he, he had to work out with another team. You got to have plan B if somebody were to sign him. Just like every team in the league, they're all dealing with it. Whether he's on the practice squad all week or you're adding him on Friday, it, it's, you know, every team's dealing with the same thing. Anything else? Coach, uh, follow up on uh, Kyle Pitts. Uh, he said after the game that, you know, talking about the matchup against Steve McGillmore and talking about how that was kind of like a welcome to the NFL moment for him. Like, how important is that for him to go through things like that to kind of be able to help himself, help his development going forward? Uh, you you got to work every day at it if you want to be a good pro. Whether they put Gilmore on him, you know, put Lattimore on him, they put Malcolm Jenkins. There's a lot of good players in this league, and you got to be ready week to week. So that's hard. It's hard to, to sustain success in this league and be a pro. Kyle's got the right mindset. It's like we all strive to be perfect, and you work to improve, and you're not going to be. I'm not going to call a perfect call every time. I'm going to try, but I'm not. And you got to be able to have the mindset to live with that and understand and be objective. Okay, what can I do better the next time? The same thing we ask the players to do. So, again, everyone wants to get in there because it's a name or not. And, you know, they write about them on, on social media and, and, you know, puff it up or whatever. At the end of the day, they're still 11 on 11, too, when you got the protections, you got the quarterbacks got to deliver it, you got to have the right spacing and the right thing. You know, that all goes together. You know, everybody needs to be coordinated to run the right routes. And sometimes, again, you don't go in a lot of scheme here, which you wouldn't know unless you're in those meetings what we're asking guys to do. We take a picture, you can have some. Some expert online that can take a still shot in football, and I'm telling you, they're dead wrong because they have no idea what the quarterback reads are. They don't understand exactly how you ask them to run it. You can know you have a general information on how somebody runs a play, but until you're in those meeting rooms, you don't know if they change the read, they change the depth. You can have a good educated guess, and there's some smart people who do that. It's not a knock on everybody that, that does it, but you get into that world like it's not like you do have to beat man covers one on one. I get that, but but it's not just all of a sudden. It's not a one on one game either. So there's a lot of cause and effects that go into it. Um, we're happy with all of our guys. We, we know where we're at in the season, and we got a hell of a challenge on Sunday. We got to be ready to roll. All right, appreciate it. Anything guys. else? Like the Braves gear in the back. Yeah,